Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. Hashtag not Friday. Uh, so this isn't a 3D printing video, so if you're only into the channel for 3D printing, uh, sorry guys, you can skip this video. But this is a follow-up on the video I did about a month ago on this milling machine where I was chasing some runout issues on it. And where we left off was uh, I had purchased an R8 test bar um, from Glasser Machine Tool, which is a very, very precise ground bar, both in uh, the concentricity uh, as well as the grind on the taper that goes into the spindle. And in fact, the accuracy in concentricity and actually every dimension, I think the worst, the worst in accuracy on this bar is two microns. This isn't in thousands, that's microns. So two microns, which is incredibly accurate. Uh, these things are not cheap, but totally worth it if you're trying to chase down um, issues in a machine, you know, trying to figure out if it's the spindle, the bearings, or what. So Precision Matthews sent me a replacement spindle, and I dropped the quill out of the machine and installed this spindle, and I still had the same issues. In fact, if anything, it was a little worse, because I pressed the original spindle back into the quill and had been using this one for the last couple of weeks, but where I ultimately thought the issue was, uh, was in the, the taper for the spindle itself, because the test bar uh, was not really fully seating in the taper. Uh, sort of the, the initial giveaway was when I looked at the test bar, there was a ring around the bottom where it seemed as if it was bottoming out at the bottom of the spindle, but not really making contact elsewhere. And when I blued it, that's exactly what it showed. It was really only making contact at the bottom, as if the angle uh, in the taper was just ground wrong. What's weird, though, is if it was ground wrong, it was ground wrong in the original spindle as well as the replacement spindle. So I'm thinking, uh, I think the manufacturer of this machine, these are, these are imported and sold by Precision Matthews in the US. I think maybe the manufacturer of the machine, I think they also sell these in, I think it's an NT30 taper. So maybe they were set up to grind NT30 instead of R8 and just didn't realize it. I mean, they're really close. Like you're not gonna notice it visually. You would need to measure it to see what you're at. Uh, maybe they ground these with an NT30 taper. I, I don't know. All I know is I was not getting a good seat on the test bar or any of my hard tooling. So my collets were kind of okay, but these guys crushed down. So the, the taper, the, the angle of the taper isn't quite as important. Um, depending on the size of what you have in here, these guys will crush down a little bit. But any of my hard tooling, like uh, drill chucks, uh, boring heads, anything that has uh, you know a taper on it that is fixed, was not seating in there. Uh, when I blew them, it was, again, it was just a contact patch. Some of the contact patches were a little bit better, like they'd come maybe a third of the way up, uh, but none of them were contacting on the whole thing. And the test bar, which is what I would trust the most, was really only contacting right around the lip. So fast forward to Thursday last week, uh, Precision Matthews sent me a whole new quill and spindle pre-assembled uh, that the, I believe the owner of the company himself uh, checked out before it was sent to me. And I've got that in the machine now. And this is the first I've uh, seated it up in here. And we're all the way down to the end of it. So with the previous spindle, this thing is about 10 inches long. Um, maybe just shy of that, actually. So we are down at about 9.75 inches from the face of the spindle. Uh, the bottom of this being the face of the spindle. Uh, we took a measurement before at 8.75 inches, so a little bit higher up. So the, the further away you are from the spindle face, the more inaccuracy you're going to have because, you know, it gets amplified the further away you are. And we measured 4.6 thou at 8.75, which is, you know, right about here. We're down at 9.75. I'm going to turn this on. I want you guys to see this. Close this so the safety disengages off forward we'll get this guy to just barely turn now worth noting that any inaccuracy in the dimensions of the pulley or even if the belt has sort of a, a spot where it's it's like bent a little bit could be pulling on the spindle and causing inaccuracy but I can't think of another way to turn this even when I turn it by hand because I have to have the head all the way up, uh, is putting more force on it and the, on, on the whole head of the machine versus any inaccuracy caused by the belt. But just worth mentioning, 
yes, I'm not turning this by hand. I am turning it with a loosely tightened belt. There's plenty of slack in that belt. But take a look at this. That is five tenths. We're reading five tenths at the bottom of this test bar. We were reading 4.6 thou here before. So that'd be 46 tenths. We went from 46 tenths to five tenths. Maybe slightly over five. We'll call that 5.5 tenths. Really, we're reading between the lines here, so and it looks like it varies. It looks like maybe on one rotation of the bearings, it's closer to five, and then another rotation, it's closer to five and a half, which, you know, isn't unusual. So uh, <laughs> it's so good. I'm actually, I'm going to reseat this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this out. I'm going to reseat it. And we're going to read it again and just see if it makes any difference. Because at this point, reading five tenths this far down, I mean, a piece of dust could be trapped up here and change our measurement for, for better or worse. I think spec on this machine, uh, Matt from Quality Machine Tools defined uh, around five inches. I think it was up to 1.2 thou. Well, that would be 12 tenths. We're reading five tenths down here. So we're obviously well within spec. In fact, way beyond spec. This is, I would not expect this level of accuracy from a machine at this price point. Uh, so we went from at least in my opinion, completely unacceptable to, wow. Let me receipt this. I'm going to bring you guys back and we'll take some more measurements. I'm going to show you this. I pulled this out. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this, but uh, the ring down here on this bar was caused by the old spindle. Uh, that was the only place it was contacting. It's really hard to see, but you can actually see the contact patch. There's the top of the patch. See, it's shiny above that all the way down. That's not bluing. That's just slight wear on the, the, uh, the metal surface. When I blued this, the entire thing uh, was contacting. There was uh, the, the whole thing um, transferred from. I, I put some Prussian blue on uh, the inside of the, uh, the spindle, the taper, a very light coat, uh, seated this guy, and the entire thing had, had blued. Uh, I don't, unfortunately, I didn't take a picture, but you have to take my word for it. Uh, but you can actually, again, you can see the contact patch. Uh, on the, the precision ground surface on the test bar. Now the whole thing's making contact. All right, I wiped the surface of this carefully with, uh, with a rag and then my finger. Did the same thing on the spindle. Let's reseat this and check it again. Okay, I've cleaned and reseated it. And we are now reading four tenths at the bottom of the bar, four tenths. So yeah, um, the spindle is pretty darn good. Let's uh, let's take a measurement at where the spec is, which I got to look that up. I think it might be around five inches down, and the spec it has to beat is 1.2 thou. That's the that's the maximum amount of runout allowed on this machine. And I'll also look up what it was running out at that distance before. Okay, we are down at about the five inch mark here, uh, which is roughly where the spec is on this machine. It's not exact, but this is where we took the original measurement and. You guys are not going to believe this. Uh, it's less than two tenths, and we were two and two point six five thou here before. So twenty six point five tenths. We're down from twenty six point five to less than two. I'm going to call that one point. Probably about one point five. I mean, we're beyond the resolution of this instrument, so really calling it anything between one and two is kind of BS, but. You know, if we're doing our best to read that, we're saying one and a half tenths from 26.5. And this is five inches down. This isn't what I would still consider to be really the working, you know, the working envelope of this machine for, you know, a longer piece of tooling, particularly if you have it in some sort of holder. Um, we definitely would be even below this on a drill bit, but, you know, the drill bits are not going to run that true anyway. So the last measurement I want to take here is inside the taper of the spindle. So we're gonna to have to get this test bar out of here and check that last one. But I'm guessing it's gotta be pretty darn good since we're, we're seeing, uh, again, one and a half tenths at five inches. I mean, great job, Precision Matthews. I am blown away. 
Oh, before we do that, here's a measurement we should have taken last time that I totally forgot to do. This uh, this test bar is actually ground on the bottom as well, so we can check for uh, run out in this direction, up and down. And I can't even measure any. I don't think that that needle is moving at all. And just to prove that uh, this is working here, if I push on the head, yeah, if I push and pull on the head, you can see that guy moving. I'm just taking this and I'm just I'm just literally pushing and pulling because there's going to be flex in this column back here. And so if I push and pull on that head, you can see that guy moving. But once I let it go, I, again, I maybe magnified on the screen when I go to edit this, I'll be able to see some movement, but I don't see any movement on that needle at all. All right, and here is our final measurement. We are up inside on these taper and the spindle now and we are seeing less than a tenth. And the reality is what we're measuring here, we could be measuring a difference in the surface finish at this point. In fact, as I did move the head up and down a little bit, I was seeing variation anywhere between barely moving and about a tenth. So that's probably more surface finish than, than anything else. Or even if it is an inaccuracy in the grind or bearings in the grinder that did this, uh, you know, we're, we're well under a tenth, which is, Really, again, I want to reiterate, really, really impressive for a machine in this price category. Uh, you know, again, going from unacceptable to far beyond what one should expect from uh, a machine in this price class. So really happy to be able to share this video with you guys, uh, particularly after I posted the first one. Certainly wasn't my intent to disparage the company. Really, I just wanted to get to the bottom of this and figure it out. Uh, the guys at Precision Matthews has, have been nothing but helpful. Um, I am a little bit frustrated that, you know, the replacement spindle had the same issue as the first. I think they might have an issue with, um, you know, checking these guys before they ship to ensure that the, you know, that everything is actually correct. Again, these could be running perfectly concentric. The, the, uh, the run out inside the, the taper wasn't quite as good as this one, but it was pretty good. It was less than two tenths, I think less than one tenth on one of these. But if that taper is not ground right, uh, hard tooling is not going to run true and i mean even even the collet is not going to run true if you are right on size with whatever you've got inside the the collet so uh, any questions put them down in the comments below and also let me know if you guys found this interesting again i know this is mainly a 3d printing channel but i have featured this mill quite a few times and uh, i did want to share the outcome of this one so Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, if this is your first time in the channel, I do a new 3D printing video, uh, functional prints, uh, every single Friday. So if you're into that sort of thing, check out my other videos. Uh, and if you're really into that, hit that subscribe button, and then you'll just, you'll get my videos in your feed. They'll show up automatically. And if you do, guys, I'll see you next Friday.